Well, hello retro computing enthusiasts, electronics geeks. Welcome to my channel, Mike here. And I thought we'd do, so, do something a little different today, a little change of pace. We're going to get away from the retro computing for a few minutes because I have something cool to play with over here. You know, over on my main channel, Omega Geek 64, I do a lot of scrapping. Okay, there's a lot of electronic scrapping, you know, computers, servers, laptops, switches, you name it. But, you know, I'm not a snob. I'll take whatever good scrap is out there. And a guy called me up and said, hey, Mike, I had to take down a great big aluminum sign outside of a business. Do you want it? A couple hundred pounds of aluminum. I said, okay, I'll go get it. So I got a couple hundred pounds of aluminum out of it. But what else I got was a great big neon sign transformer that was inside the sign. And it looks a little beat up, a little bit rusty. But I thought, well, what the heck? Let me plug it in and see if the thing works. So here we go. Turn the power on. Look at that. Nice little arc right there. All right. So we got a working neon sign transformer. Excellent. I'll give you a closer look at this thing and its nameplate and specifications. Yeah, it's a little rusty, but it still works. 7,500 volts at 30 milliamps. That is impressive. That is a lot of power. Think about the watts you got there. But, uh, yeah, it works. That's the important thing. So let's see what else we can do with this thing. Let me turn it on again. There goes the arc. All right, so what am I going to do with it? All right, other than, you know, it's it's pretty impressive. Um, I can pull some pretty decent sparks with it. Once it, the arc, arc initiates, I can separate the wires and get a pretty good arc out of it before the arc extinguishes. But... Uh, what do we want to do with it? Well, immediately comes to mind the possibility of a Jacob's Ladder. In fact, maybe we'll try making one in this video and see if we can get that done before the end of the video. And uh, while I'm making a Jacob's Ladder, maybe we'll talk about some other potential uses for this thing. Maybe somewhat more practical? We'll see. Let me get some stiff copper wire and um, get rid of these short little flexible wires in here and we'll see if we can make ourselves a jacob's ladder and get that going all right taking a bit of a break from a big project i've been working on with my nabu computer I just thought i'd have a little fun out here life can't be all you know microprocessors retro computers and whatnot sometimes you just got to have a little um pointless fun with high voltage electricity so, see if we can get a Jacob's Ladder working with this thing. I found some stiff copper wire, and uh, I've got it attached to the terminals in place of this high-voltage cable, which was on there. Too bad it was cut. I would like to have a few meters of this really cool, well-insulated high-voltage cable, but I don't. Well, I suppose I'll have to buy some. All right, let's, uh, let's turn on the power and see what happens. A whole lot of nothing. Let me, uh... Yeah, the thing about Jacob's Ladders is getting them to... A, the arc to form, and B, the arc to climb. It doesn't help I'm doing this outside where there's a bit of a breeze. There we go, it's getting better. Let me see if I can get something to block the breeze, because I think that's screwing us up some here. I'm starting to, starting to get something there. Let me turn it off and get something to block the breeze. All right, let's see here. That's going to block the breeze, so see if we can get this working any better here. It can be a delicate adjustment on these. You want the wires close enough together at the bottom for the arc to form. But then they need to spread out as you go up above the point where the arc forms for it to climb. And the ways that 
the reason it climbs is because the arc is very hot. We're heating the air in the arc there up to a couple thousand degrees. And that air, hot air wants to rise, and as it rises, it's going to pull the ionized gases of the arc up with it. See, we're not quite wanting to climb as well as we ought to. Let me see if I can readjust that some more. These wires are probably hot now. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, they're hot. Okay, I may have to get some gloves on to, to mess with them. Let's see, what did I figure? There are 7,500 7, volts at 30 milliamps. That's... Uh, 225 watts of energy in that arc. So, yeah, it's heating this copper up pretty good. Or maybe I'll just give it a few seconds to cool off and then try readjusting it a little bit. Yeah, it works sometimes. Getting it, the adjustment is so delicate. Especially even with the box here blocking the wind, we still got some issues with the uh, stray air currents screwing with the arc. So, yeah. Well, you'll see a lot of these sometimes encased under glass. It's a safety feature, but it also prevents the uh, ambient um, air currents from messing with the arc and preventing it from rising. If I block more of the air here coming across it, it works, more or less. Like I said, it's a delicate adjustment. Come on, you can do it. Yeah. So, fun fact about Jacob's Ladders, maybe you didn't know. They have no practical use. None whatsoever. They were invented as a prop for a Frankenstein movie. And uh, they became, you know, sort of a fixture in every mad scientist's movie laboratory. Again, no practical purpose whatsoever. They're just flashy and fun with high voltage, that's all. No practical purpose. So what practical purposes could I put a neon sign transformer like this to? Well, there's lots of practical purposes I could put it to. Um... Seven and a half thousand volts. That would be good input for like a Tesla coil. You know, this thing could be the primary uh, power source for a Tesla coil. Have a spark gap driving this, the, the the primary coil on it, and then have a big long secondary coil. We could step this seven and a half thousand volts up to a couple million, maybe. That would be make some impressive sparks, wouldn't it? Yeah. How about a Marx generator? Marx generator could be fun. Say, oh, I don't know, um, 10 or 20 stage marks generator. Oh, we get a lot of voltage out of that. Definitely. Um, so those are possibilities, which, you know, I might actually uh, do that. I built a marks generator once when I was a lot younger, long before my YouTube days. And it was fun to play with. And as a kid, I had a Tesla coil. And that was fun to play with. I mean, kid, I'm talking kid. We're talking long before the Internet, even. I'm old. What can I say? Sorry. Um, another possible practical use I could put this thing to is um, nitric acid production. You know, again, over on my main channel, you know, I scrap out electronics. But one thing I like to do is get the gold and silver out of the electronics. And um, I use a lot of nitric acid for that. Um, I have my way of making my own nitric acid uh, with uh, starting with chemicals like sodium nitrate and uh, concentrated sulfuric acid and a big distillation apparatus. I can make a lot of nitric acid. That works great. Or without the use of any chemicals other than water and air and a high voltage arc, which the wind is really playing havoc with our arc right now. It's actually going down rather than up. There we go. Come on. Block some more of the wind here. Need something better to block the wind. Um, but with just water, air, and a high voltage arc, I can make nitric acid. And nitric acid is expensive. $70, $80 a liter for concentrated nitric acid. It's one reason I make my own. 
the apparatus and chemicals needed to make it are a lot cheaper than the acid itself. But here I could make it out of thin air with just a high voltage arc. Basically, this arc will burn hot enough that it will cause the nitrogen in the air to burn, combined with the oxygen in the air, to produce nitrogen oxides, which we can dissolve in water, and that will result in nitric acid. So that's a possible um, practical application for this transformer. Or I could just build a really, really cool um, Jacob's Ladder with it. Maybe with a nice glass dome over it to keep the air currents out and, and keep, you know, curious fingers away. And uh, I'm not sure my wife would want it in the living room, though. It'd be a heck of a conversation piece, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. So anyway, in the future, you might see some of those projects I talked about. Maybe a Marx generator, maybe a Tesla coil, maybe a nitric acid generator. Hey, now we're going good. That's more like the way it's supposed to go. In every Frankenstein movie you've ever seen. Yeah. That's better. So anyway, subscribe to see those possible future videos. And if you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like. Give it a thumbs up. I'm not going to get my thumb too close into the picture here. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. I don't want to get shocked. And subscribe to see those future videos. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this one. Igor, get the brain. I think we're ready. Bye.